Here we are again. It's Brother Peter with tidbits from the Word. I can't seem to get away uh, today from Jeremiah because Jeremiah was told by God to not be dismayed, not pay attention, that people would come against him, that people would uh, even despise him because he followed the God of heaven. And these very people he were preaching to were supposed to be following the God of heaven too. But they were looking for somebody to tickle their ears and to tell them, you're okay, bub, just keep doing what you're doing, you're all right. But Jeremiah came along and said, you're not all right. God said, this is not all right. What you're doing is not all right. Uh, some of the things that are happening today were the things that were happening in that day. There were uh, men with men. There were women with women. There were men with multiple wives. There were men and, and women uh, divorcing and changing partners. They were doing all the things that are happening today. And Zig, you go lay down in bed. I have a dog up here that's in, you know, aggravating me this morning. He doesn't know whether he wants to stay or go. And But the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah and said, Listen, you go tell those folks. And I covered this in the last excerpt I did. But I want, I want you to read this. I want you to read in chapter 1 and verse 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou comest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. I ordained thee a prophet unto the nation. This is God telling Jeremiah, he's a chosen vessel. And I want to tell you today, God is saying the same thing to every individual today who has said, Jesus, forgive me of my sin. Come into my heart and save my soul. Every single individual that has been born today and is on this earth was a chosen vessel of God. But I'm here to tell you, the devil has stole away all that he can and will steal until the end of the earth comes, he will steal away souls of men. God's desire and design for mankind was that he worship God, he become one with God through the Holy Spirit, and live in communion with the God of heaven, the creator of heaven and earth, the creator of the first man and all men, was God and is God. And his desire is, is that you and I would follow him. Verse 6 of chapter 1. Then said I, Our Lord, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. Listen, God came to Jeremiah when he was young and talked to him and said, Get out there and do what I'm going to tell you to do. You do what I'm going to tell you to do. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Listen, our command is the word of God. This is what we are to speak, the word of God. God said, I'm going to give you the words to say, Jeremiah, and you say them. Now, the words that God has given you and I to say, are these words that Jesus left us in the Bible. And uh, Jeremiah, uh, there were six men set apart at birth from God. Six men in the Bible that was talked about were completely set apart to do the serious work that God made for them to do. Uh, Samson was one of them. Samson was set apart from his mother's womb to do what God would have him do. What did Samson do? He did the same thing that, if you want to know the truth, that Adam did. He sacrificed 
his freedom in God, his power in God, his godly life, he sacrificed it for the physical, pleasurable love of a woman. And he sacrificed it and wound up, ending up dying in miserable state with his eyes put out. And because he listened to the devil and not to the Lord. And then there was another one, Samuel. Samuel, uh, the priest. And uh, how God chose him from his mother's womb. You remember his mother praying in the temple and then Samuel being born she dedicated him to the Lord God of heaven and then Jeremiah it said God had uh, set Jeremiah apart for the work that he was going to have him do and and then there was John the Baptist now John the Baptist came uh, out of the wilderness eating locusts and wild honey here is the uh, forerunner of Jesus Christ six months prior to Jesus, first cousin, and he comes up and God sends him into the wilderness like he did perhaps Jeremiah, and he comes out of the wilderness with a message, and he gives that message. He comes up and he preaches that message, and then Jesus Christ was the Son of God set apart from before the foundation of the world to come walk on this earth as a man for 33 years and to give his life on the cross for you and I and to bring the Holy Spirit into the world to uh, fill every man that is in the world who will have him to do so and then Paul the Apostle the very man whose name was Saul was crossing the land who was killing the Christian people of the first church he was set apart by God called by God from his mother's womb to serve God you say well he was killing Christians yeah but Paul was rightfully killing Christians and by the way you and I might look at death a little different than God looks at it uh, the death of a Christian is a going home it's, in a sense, a gift <laughs> rather than a curse. It's a gift to go on home to be in heaven. That's a gift and not a curse. And the word sanctify, to sanctify here means to be set apart. To be sanctified means to be set apart. Here are six men that from their birth were set apart to do the work of God continually and to do the work that God would have them and uh, the cleansed from sin cleansed from sin what is sanctification sanctification when you say Jesus I am a sinner forgive me of my sin come into my heart and save my soul at that moment you are sanctified in the eyes of God just as if you had never sinned justification is just as if you had never sinned and that's the thing that God does for you he makes it to where just as if you had never sinned justification that's what that's called and sanctification is an ongoing process that you and I have to do on a daily basis what is sanctification Sanctification is sanctifying the things that you do on a daily basis as you live. Now suppose you have a bad word that you use on a regular basis. And the Lord speaks to you about that word, saying to you, you know, that's not a good thing. How about sanctifying that? How about putting that away? and never bring it up again and don't use it anymore and change your way that is called sanctification that is how you get sanctified now uh, we work at that that is something we work at justified just as if we never sinned comes as a free gift sanctification comes as an ongoing process 
that we do through the Word of God by putting down those things which are not profitable to us. Uh, let's see. The words of Jeremiah, the son of uh, Helkai, and and the priest that was in uh, Antith in the land of Benjamin. Now we know where he was. He was in the land of Benjamin, to whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Joash and the son of Ammon, king of Judah, in the thirteenth year of his reign. Listen, God didn't pen down anything in his book that he didn't make sure. He made it sure for you and I that all these things were written during a period of time that could, you, historically, you can go back and guarantee that they were all correct. The thing about it is, everything, this Bible was put together uh, over a period of some 1,600 years by some 40 authors. And all of them were spirit-filled authors. And they, all of their writings coincide with each other, all the way from the first writing to the last writing. The Holy Spirit, if you please, was the one that put it all together. One spirit entering into 40 different men, giving them the knowledge and the, rec and the ability to write verses that fit with other verses that were written a thousand years earlier, or written many years different by a different person, and verses they never had read. And uh, Jeremiah prophesied under uh, five different kings. He was in the land prophesying through five different kings. That's kind of like Billy Graham, if you think about it. Billy Graham uh, prophesied through how many presidents? Probably four or five presidents or more. Uh, I don't know how many presidents Billy Graham uh, was able to go and pray with or speak directly to. Because he was a servant of God, because he is a servant of God, because he's one who followed God, who didn't pay attention to what the people said, who paid attention to what God said, God carried him from his little humble little hometown uh, there where he's from and carried him all over the world. And the Billy Graham Crusades are still going on. And Graham, uh, uh, his, his son, is going on. And the, the, the work is going on. God is going to finish what he started with that family. And praise the Lord for that. Listen, I, we, you and I, are we, are we doing all that we can do in the Lord Jesus Christ? Are we in the book? Are we praying every single solitary morning when we open our eyes? Are we praying to the God of heaven to guide and lead us and guide us through the day? Or are we not? Are we doing that? If we are, then we need to be doing it. Look, this is a good time uh, right now in this United States of America to step up and be a Jeremiah. I challenge you to step out of your comfort zone and be a Jeremiah. I'm a track passer. I pass tracks on a daily basis every day. I take them out and pass them to people. And my little old track says, if you died right now, would you go to heaven? And I ask people that on a daily basis. If you died right now, would you go to heaven? That's the most important question that you can answer in your life. When you get to heaven, what is your accountability going to be? When you get to heaven, are you going to have rewards in heaven that last forever? You know, to have a new car is nice, but when you die, the car is staying here. But to have something in heaven that's compatible to the new car... When you get to heaven, it will go on forever and it will multiply. So that's why the Bible says, lay up in heaven your treasures and not on the earth. 
And so therefore, I'm not saying don't drive a new car, but I'm saying if it robs you from doing God's work, don't have a new car. You'd be better to have one penny in heaven forever than you would to have a whole row of new cars. So, think about it. Anyway, here we are. Jeremiah is the man that we need to look at today. We need to uh, maybe uh, see how many ways that Jeremiah was that we might could follow because he was the example for you and I. My time has come and gone. I must go now. Brother Peter with tidbits from the words. See you next time. Bye-bye.